here's how it begins. Squire Trelawney, Dr. Livesey, and the rest of these gentlemen, having asked me to write down the whole particulars about Treasure Island from the beginning to the end, keeping nothing back but the bearings of the island, and that only because there is still treasure not yet lifted, I take up my pen in the year of grace, 17 something something, and go back to the time when my father kept the Admiral Benbow in. And the brown old seaman with the sabre cut first took up his lodging under our roof. I remember him as if it were yesterday as he came plodding to the inn door, his sea chest following behind him in a hand barrow, a tall, strong, heavy, not brown man, his tarry pigtail falling over the shoulder of his soiled blue coat, his hands ragged and scarred with black broken nails and the sabre cut across one cheek, a dirty, livid white. I remember him looking round the cover and whistling to himself as he did so, and then breaking out in that old sea song that he sang so often afterwards. Fifteen men on the dead man's chest, yo ho ho, and a bottle of rum. In the high, old, tottering voice, that seemed to have been tuned and broken at the capstan bars. Then he rapped on the door with a bit of stick like a handspike that he carried. And when my father appeared, called roughly for a glass of rum. This, when it was brought to him, he drank slowly, like a connoisseur lingering on the taste and still looking about him at the cliffs and up at our signboard. This is a handy cove, says he at length, and a pleasant situated grog shop. Much company, mate. My father told him, no, very little company, and more was the pity. Well then, said he, this is the berth for me. Here, you, matey, he cried to the man who trundled the barrow. Bring up alongside and help up my chest. I'll stay here a bit, he continued. I'm a plain man. Rum and bacon and eggs is what I want. And that uh, head up there for to watch ships off. What you might call me, you might call me captain. Oh, I see what you're at there. And he threw down three or four gold pieces on the threshold. You can tell me when I've worked through that, said he, looking as fierce as a commander. So that's the introduction to the old sea captain, Billy Bones. We'll shortly meet another of these vivid characters, Blind Pew. A wonderful um, panoply of um, heroes and villains, mostly villains. It's a story that uh, Robert Louis Stevenson wrote for his stepson. And, it's his, and I think for that reason, uh, he had a very specific audience in mind, and for that reason, the rest of us can so easily and happily look over the shoulder of that stepson of Robert Louis Stevenson as, he, as we embark on Treasure Island.